Salt marshes are one of the true treasures of the South Carolina coast. On first glance, they may seem monotonous, a vast expanse of murky water dominated by a single species of grass. But all salt marshes are not the same. Port Royal Sound is unique. It's deep, over 40 feet, making it the deepest natural port in the southeast. There are no major rivers feeding into the sound, so the marine waters extend up to 10 miles inland. And this region has one of the largest tides on the southeastern coast, averaging 8.5 feet. The reason for these huge tides has to do with the shape of the shoreline. Port Royal Sound is located near the vertex of a dramatic curve in the coast called the Georgia Bight, and the tides become amplified as the water approaching the shoreline is pushed into a smaller and smaller area. And when you have a large tide at night in May, one of the most amazing spectacles of the Carolina coast occurs. I'm off to visit with Department of Natural Resources biologists and volunteers, including Elizabeth Wenner. They're inventorying horseshoe crabs at one of the best breeding beaches in the area. Though I've seen them before, I've never seen anything like this. Well, these are first horseshoe crabs. And we got a pair here, Elizabeth. And these guys are just coming up to spawn, or are they already spawned? They've already um, been up here. They came up on the last high tide, and now she's headed back out to the water. The tide's so, come back yeah, up, so she's, she's ready to go. Back out. Horseshoe crabs, are they crabs? No, they're not true crabs. Uh, they're actually chelicerates. Which so. is more closely related to scorpions and spiders yes, than yes. they are true. More cl closely related to the scorpions. Not yes. even crustaceans. Oh, this is a male? Yes, and he's latched on right there. Right, and the structure that he's using to latch onto the female is this front pair of claws. Yes, it's modified. And that front set of legs is called pedipalps? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and the, on, that's the best way, I guess, to tell the difference between male and female it is the best at any way. age. And um, these guys are really separated out into three segments. We have this front part of the carapace, which is called the prosoma, yes, right? Yes, yeah. And this one I hate because it's hard to pronounce. It's epistosoma. 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 Yeah, and this is the telson. And that one's the telson. So prosoma, epistosoma, yeah. and telson. It seems like letters that don't go and together. And sometimes just for simple reasons, you recall this just the carapace or the head area, the thorax right. area, and then this is the abdominal area, mm -hmm. and then uh, then the telson. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's really, really what it is. What do they use this telson for? They use it to right themselves. It's not poisonous. It's not like a stingray or anything like that. And but if you turn him over, and we'll watch him use his tail, and what he's doing, he's using it to right himself. And if you see one of these on the beach and it's trying to get back to the water and you feel like you, you, you need to help it, one of the big mistakes people make is by picking these things up by the tail. Yeah, yeah. So really when we see one, if Just we do want to give it, it like that. right on the yeah. front of the carapace, yeah. a lot of the research that's been done on them involves research about their eyes. And this is something that's absolutely amazing to me is these guys can actually switch on and off um, increased light sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So these lateral eyes have something called lateral interference uh, that during the day reduces the amount of light that they take in. And the median eye, this eye right here in the center, actually turns on and off that lateral interference so that at night they have many hundreds of times more sensitivity to light. And so that helps them actually in finding mates out here on the beach late, late at night. And I think how they breathe is just incredible through these book gills. Right. I mean, this is just awesome to me because book gills also occur in the spiders or right. the arachnids. arachnids have them. Just layers and layers of gills, and that's a very primitive right. um, a book feature. gill is very primitive, Yeah, yes, so when we look is. at arthropods, that's the most primitive arthropods have book gills, and that allows us to talk about how primitive this creature really is. Right, it's been it, dates back, it dates back to the Ordovician period, so. 300 million years yeah. ago. Ordovician period is a period that predates dinosaurs by 100 million years. <laughs>